So oh, AQI numbers are not the only thing that's up, Larry. Uh -oh. PG&E rates are as well. Yeah, last week the CPUC released two rate proposals for the utility. PG&E is asking for rate increases to boost its revenue by 26%. But those proposals would only increase their revenue by 13%. Listen to this. Customer bills would be $24 to $28 higher every month. A decision on this will be made in November. ABC 7 News reporter Suzanne Fawn is live in the newsroom with a closer look at what the rate hike would mean for you. Suzanne? So, Kristen Larry, 28 bucks a month doesn't sound that bad for some, but you're looking at potentially hundreds of dollars a year. We've got a lot of mixed reactions about the proposed power bill increases. These are the power lines Mary Flett sees by her home in Sonoma. She's among the 16 million PG&E customers expecting to see an increase in their power bill soon. I received an email notice from PG&E saying our rates were going to go up to be prepared. The reason given for this was that they are putting in underground power lines. Flett says she lives in a fire area and that putting the lines underground makes sense. She says the rate increases, though, don't. The CPUC proposal is to increase rates by 9% or 13%. The initial PG&E rate increase proposal was 26%. This is absurd and basically my frustration at not being able to impact or have any say in addressing this egregious increase. We certainly understand our customers' concerns about affordability and bills. PG&E says the rate increases are necessary to put 2,100 miles of power lines underground, but that the CPUC plan isn't enough. We think that um, they fall short of the funding that we need necessary to continue making the really important wildfire safety enhancements that we've been making. The Utility Reform Network, a.k.a. TURN, advocates on behalf of ratepayers. PG&E wants to put most of its, um, many of its power lines underground. That is far too expensive an approach for wildfire safety. The much better approach is to insulate the power lines, which is a faster and cheaper way. pg &E explains why undergrounding is a better option to reducing wildfire risks. When you put those lines underground, it reduces the need to do things like uh, tree trimming and maintenance around those lines, and it also far increases reliability. It reduces and in some cases eliminates the need for safety shutoffs. Talking to residents in San Francisco, we heard mixed reactions. To me, I, I think it's a bad idea. I think it's a bad idea. It costs a lot of money for the city. I always hate to have anything go up, but I think we need those cables underground. Today, State Senator Scott Weiner released this statement, quote, this rate increase places an absurd burden on Californians' pocketbooks to pay for updates PG&E should have performed decades ago. Once again, PG&E is saddling its ratepayers with the consequences of its failure to plan and budget effectively. Again, the California Public Utilities Commission will vote on November 2nd on whether to let PG&E raise rates by 9% or 13%. The Utility Reform Network says concerned ratepayers can express their concerns online by going to the CPUC website. Live in the newsroom, Suzanne Fawn, ABC 7 News. Well, PG&E has had a series of rate hikes over the past several years, from 2018 to 2023. The average monthly bill increased nearly 42%. Now, last year, there were two rate hikes totaling 18.4%, and already this year, there's been an 8% hike.